the more I stay here in the Philippines, the more that I film, I get to learn about the environment and the creatures that are in this country. And let me tell you, there are some incredible species from endangered one, critical endangered, to even some endemic ones. And endemic means they're only found here in the Philippines. So throughout the couple of years here, I've been dreaming of seeing a couple of them. And I've also made a go with my YouTube channel here with all the revenue that I make of it I invested back into my equipment and trips to continue my passion which is exploring adventures animals and all those things related so I want to share now the top 10 things that I wrote down that are top of my head that I want to see in the future here in the Philippines with the pandemic it's been really hard to uh, do that list but I think we can look forward to seeing some of them at least in the near future. I think things are coming back to uh, sort of normal and hopefully the borders are gonna open. But without further ado, let's just jump into the list of my top 10 species or animals that I wanna see here. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't noticed already in the timeline of every video that I've been publishing lately, you can click on it and skip to the section you wanna see in the video. So if you wanna skip to the top three, just click one button and you go there. So if you have limited time on watching YouTube, have to do errands or whatever, this should help you out. And while you're at it, please hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. Number 10, the Mandarin fish. This is a bucket list fish that I've been trying to see for such a long time and I just, it, it's really hard to find because you one, have to know the spot or the area they hide in or live in. So lately, I've actually been going around meeting some local guys here that are expert in finding this specific fish. And I've learned some locations, even here in Mobile, that where they live. And they basically live in an area that there's a dead coral in a shallow reef. And it's dead because the mandarin fish actually spits out a liquid that is toxic and kills the reef around them. And that's where they dwell. Now they only come at night time, just before sunset, so you have about 30 to 45 minute window to actually see them. And the whole other daytime or nighttime, they're sleeping inside, so you can't see them. So only in that window you can actually see them come out and do, make some uh, beautiful mating displays. But more importantly to me, it's the variety of color and vibrance that are on them. I believe this is one of the most colorful fish in the world and there's plenty of them here in the Philippines so this one goes of course onto my list number 10. At number 9 I want to see the Palawan anteater or something I think it's called that Palawan anteater and it's probably one you never heard about it kind of looks like a armadillo really scaly back and uh, has this tube form nose where I guess there's a tongue that comes out and uh, swipes up the ants on the ground. This one is very unique here and I believe it's endemic only in the Philippines this one and of course found in Palawan like there's so many species over there that are completely endemic only found there in the world and also I would like to mention that it's really hard to find this species without local knowledge. In the past year the things that I found it always comes through a local from the ground. They know where it is, they've seen it of course and they help you find it. So I wanna throw a question back to you guys. If you know anyone in Palawan that is uh, expert in species and de endemic ones, please reach out to me because uh, that's a dream of mine to uh, go there, try to find them, and perhaps help out with conservation in that area. That is always something I'm really into. Number eight, we're again in Palawan. And this is the Palawan peacock peasant. This is the iconic bird of Palawan. It's even on the seal of the Palawan symbol. It is a gorgeous bird. I, I'm not sure it can fly actually because it is such a big body, almost like a turkey. <laughs> Small, beautiful head with a massive body. Super bluish, vibrant. And of course you can see these ones in the zoo. But for me, I really want to see them in the wild. So that's going to be difficult. We also talk about later in the video about some species that I've seen in a motorbike <laughs> now there are of course species in aquariums and like an oslop and all that but every single one on this list is gonna be where i want to see them in the wild number seven we got the visayan spotted deer 
This cute little beautiful deer is only found in Necros nowadays, I believe. There's a very good organization in Necros in Bacolot. I'll link them down below where you're gonna go check them out. This organization is phenomenal, so I'm pretty sure in the future I'll go visit them and uh, we'll try to find this spotted deer. They've actually been helping them reproduce at their organization in Bacolot and they're beginning to release them back into the wild. So that is very inspiring to see. Negros has the most difficulties uh, bringing back the native endemic species because uh, there's been so much cutting down of the forest. I think they're starting to protect it more and more. The remaining areas of Mount Canlaon and the three massive mountains near the Bacolot and that area you can find a lot of cool species but the one that I want to see the most is the spotted Visayan deer. <laughs> Number six is the Melipe Colmane Goslaner. I think that's the scientific name for it, but better known as the Skeleton Nudibranch. This is my number one nudibranch that I want to see, but it makes it number six on the list. And uh, this one is so unique that it's only found in three countries in the world. And out of these three, there's only two known spots where you can see them on a regular basis. One in Indonesia and in, uh, Banta, I think. And then there's one here in Romblon. And this one is like the mother of all nudibranchs that people wanna see here that are into diving because it has this craziest shape, this animal. The whole body of it is transparent. And then you have these tubes going around the, the nudibranch that look like a skeleton. So that's why it's called the skeleton nudie. Only found in Romblon so far. That's of course on my bucket list to go there specifically to see this gorgeous super rare nudibranch number five the philippine saltwater crocodile <laughs> yeah scary want to see a crocodile but i really want to uh, see them you can both find them of course in siarco you can see them in balabac but the philippine saltwater crocodile is one of the biggest in the world and that's why i really want to see them uh, not a big fan of seeing them in the soup but it's really cool seeing them in the wild is what i want to do i even got the uh, underwater housing so perhaps I'm able to dip the housing <laughs> into the water but of course to be extra careful I know some underwater film photographers that actually dive with crocodiles in the wild so there's a specific method how to actually dive with them safely now I'm not sure that has been done before in the Philippines I haven't seen any footage of that and I of course wouldn't do it without an expert but that's something I really would love to do one day. So yeah, if there's any uh, crocodile underwater photographers out there, experts, hit me up. Let's go on a mission, balabak. <laughs> Number four, we got the whale sharks. And I mentioned before that, yeah, I've seen them in Oslop, I've seen them in Indonesia, but both cases there was feeding involved. And there's some opinions about that, but we wouldn't want to go into it. So. It makes it onto my list because I want to see them in the wild. There's two really good locations, both in Sokot Bay in uh, Leite and then of course in Tupataha. Hopefully Tupataha trips will be available this year, but I highly doubt it. We're trying to work on some things with that. Perhaps next year we'll be able to see the whale shark in the wild. Number three, and this one might be one of the difficult... I was just about to speak to... It's funny that the birds are going off because I'm about to mention the third which is a bird and that is the Rufus Hornbill. This is the biggest hornbill that is in the Philippines. I think it's endemic one so it's only found here. You sure? It's true? It's only endemic. Right, okay. I didn't know that. He knows. This is absolutely one of the most gorgeous birds you can find. Hornbills are the long uh, beak birds that uh, eat nuts, I think, or some, some seeds of very specific trees. So it always comes down to uh, protecting the rainforest. We do have some other very endemic ones, like the Visayan hornbill, Sulu hornbill. So there you have at least three, four hornbill endemic species in the Philippines. So comment below if you ever heard about this before. So I'm just like, ah, oh, I want to see them so badly. And uh, I did see one in Catanduanes with the fighter boys on the road. But of course, it's very hard to get the right moment to film it. You really have to go on an expedition. 
So that's why I say once again, if there's anyone out there all over the Philippines that's into this type of stuff, hit me up. Number two, I'm not sure if you heard about this before, but we do have whales. Specifically the humpback whales. Okay, wind, chillax. Look at that tree here. Anyways, am I in focus? All right, the humpback whales. There is a migrational season in the country. I think it's between uh, January and March. They go through the Papayan group of islands in northern Luzon. That's the uh, like five, six islands in between Batanes and Luzon. So they're right in the center there. And I've actually made attempt before to go there. There is an institution that is researching them every year and their migrational patterns. I reached out to them and they basically said, yeah, Finn, you can join us on this expedition. It's like three weeks out there, you know, documenting the humpbacks. And then uh, I was like, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm going, I'll join it. I'll help you film everything. You can have all my photos, all my videos. I'll bring all the camera equipment. But then I found out later, I was not able to go into the water. <laughs> and the reason I was not allowed to go into the water and take pictures of them, or video, is because they're using these uh, listening device. Listening to the humpbacks, try to you know get some data from that to research their um, communications or whatever so I was like gonna spend a three weeks on an open banca <laughs> and I'm not allowed to jump into the water so unfortunately I just said ah that's not gonna work guys yeah, I let that project go but with that said I'm definitely gonna go back there one day I'm just gonna hire maybe a local fisherman to take me out there and uh, we'll try to find it on our own terms. I'll also link those guys below that institution, the, the organization that is researching the humpback whales over there. Awesome job they're doing. All right, and for the number one spot, of course, it is the pride of Philippines, the Filipino eagle. That is the number one I want to see in the wild. Of course, we've seen them in the Eagle Foundation uh, near Davao. They're also an organization that is doing such a cool job. Link them down below if you want to go check them out. That's where you can see them in a rehabilitation. Uh, they have, and then they eventually release them into the wild. And I've seen some videos of what these guys are doing. And it's just, I've, I've seen them from the moment they have captured their bird, the latest one, a local fisherman actually saw him on the sea and the fisherman brought him over to land. Then he got to the rehabilitation center and he regained his strength. And then they eventually released him back into the wild. And the moment they released the Filipino eagle in the water, I just got these goosebumps watching it. It was such a beautiful moment. So they're doing an awesome, awesome job. Wow, I almost got tears thinking about it again. <laughs> it's awesome. Like I said, with my big lens, I want to see them in the wild. That is my dream. And uh, hopefully we can uh, chase that once things get back to a sort of normal. And probably with all of these mentions on this list, it's going to be a at least a week missions for me to accomplish because going there the preparation the planning the communications and then getting there and then spending the time it's always going to be at least one week or more so it's a big list even if it's only 10 items i have a bunch more maybe a real later but for now i think that's going to be my top 10 list to see in the near future in the country so uh hope you enjoy this uh top 10 another video. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Peace.